I was still looking for a damn movie to watch with the girls when I noticed at the very back of the shelf, there was a very old Thomas the Tank Engine movie. I remembered watching that movie when I was a young boy and it was quite entertaining. One night, I was at a friend's house babysitting his little sisters Sally and Nicole. My friend was at a party and I had promised him that I would look after the two girls until their mother came home. I even promised the two girls that I would put a movie on for them, so I went through the DVD shelf looking for a movie. But they were very young girls, so I didn't want to put on anything that was too unsuitable for them. I decided to choose this as the movie but when I showed the DVD to the girls, they didn't want to watch it. Being septic, I asked them why and one of the girls responded with, if we were to watch that, he would find us. That sentence creeped me out. Who would find you? I asked. But they didn't respond. I decided to brush it off and just let them pick the movie instead. But for the rest of the night it did haunt me, who was he? It scared me so much and I was so skeptical about it that after when my friend got home, I decided to steal the DVD and find out what was on the disc. I came home and put the DVD into my PlayStation 3. When the DVD loaded, it started with the opening scene from the classic Thomas episodes. But everything wasn't right. The opening scene was all glitchy and very low quality, there were no credits, the music was playing backwards, and the screen would occasionally cut to static for a split second. After the opening scene ended, the screen stayed static for three seconds, and then the actual episode started. Or at least, what was supposed to be the episode. Everything looked normal, but something wasn't right. All the engines were at Nap Ford Station but they all looked sad and depressed. The fat controller was thinner compared to his usual plump self and Thomas was nowhere to be. Seen. James the Red Engine seemed to be having a conservation with the station master. Then, the fat controller went up to him and asked if he was ready. James started crying and said that he didn't want to do it. The fat controller looked at him angrily saying, we have no choice. The whole situation was kind of depressing. But this was usually a light-hearted show. Why was this episode so depressing? James went out of Knapp Ford Station and continued down the tracks. Soon he reached a dark tunnel and as he slowly approached it, everything went black. After that nothing happened. It was just completely black for the next five minutes until the normal credits appeared. The DVD ended and went back to the main menu. I decided to take the disc out and put it back in the case, thinking it was some type of stupid bootleg. But as I took the disc out, something wasn't right. When I first inserted the disc, it looked like a normal DVD. But when it was ejected, there was a message written on it, you stole my life. I didn't really pay much attention to it at the time, but it was very freaky. I put it back in the case and left it on my bedside table. That night, I started to have a very weird dream that I was actually a train going down the same tracks James did. As I reached the tunnel, the number sticker that was on James was placed on the side of the tunnel. Suddenly, the train in my dream went into the tunnel and soon I heard a loud scream that woke me up. I was terrified, covered in sweat. I had no idea what was going on or what that dream was. I was getting ready for school the next morning. I was packing my books when I remembered that I forgot to do my homework. I opened up my English book to write something down and there, I got a shock. Almost all the pages in the book were ripped out. The only page that was there was a giant T in scribbles. I checked the rest of my books. They were all the same. All the pages were ripped out, except for one with a giant T on it. I decided to fake an illness so I could stay home and watch the DVD a second time to try and find secrets I didn't notice on the first viewing. I didn't find anything secret. It was just the same DVD I watched last night. But when I got to the part where James went into the tunnel and everything went black, I could hear something. Voices. I turned up the volume on my TV. 
I could hear the voices of Thomas and James. They sounded like they were having a conversation. Thomas was talking about disturbing incidents such as global warming, suicide, animal abuse, and all that sort of stuff. James was begging Thomas to stop, and Thomas did. But then, Thomas responded with, You stole my life, I steal it back. James screamed loudly as a demonic laugh was heard and then it all went quiet. Suddenly, the disc glitched out and refused to play. Every time I took it out and put it back in, the disc would just refuse to play. I then suddenly got a phone call. Thinking it was my mother, I placed the disc on the table and answered the phone. When I said hello, a voice on the other end said, I know you're listening, Kenny Ken. That was my name. And the worst part was that it sounded exactly like Thomas. I dropped my phone and grabbed the DVD. I rushed out of the house with it, put it back in the case and threw it in the trash can outside my house. The garbage truck then came the next day and I never saw the DVD again. I never had any issues after that. My life just went back to normal. I was no longer haunted by Thomas. So I believe that the DVD is some type of curse. And the more I look back at it now, I feel that if I had kept the DVD for longer I probably would have risked my life to whatever was on the other end. But I just wish I had destroyed the disc while I had the chance, because I know the DVD is still out there. And whoever is unfortunate enough to get a hold of the disc is going to be cursed. Thanks for reading my story. I felt that I just had to get the message. At the time I found the disc, I was working with the dustbin man. However, me and my mate Tony would usually dig into some of the crap inside as we liked to find different tools and objects that we could recycle and make into much cooler things such as furniture and other stuff like that. I mean, one time we made an entire kitchen set out of a broken down car. Pretty sweet. But one day, I discovered a Thomas the Tank Engine DVD in the rubbish. The disc looked brand new and the DVD looked pretty good. So I decided to take it home with me that night. I wanted to give it to my nephew as a birthday present. But being skeptical about this certain disc, I decided to watch it first just to make sure there were no glitches or frozen parts on the DVD because I didn't want to give my nephew a disc of his favorite show that would freeze at certain parts. I also wanted something to play in the background while I did my online gaming. I came home and put the disc in my Xbox 360. But the minute the disc loaded, the intro to the DVD was very slow. No music was playing in the background. In the intro, you would have Thomas going down the track with his coaches Annie and Clara Abel with an upbeat tune playing. But this time, Thomas wasn't there. It was just some different engine going down the track with a frightened and sad look on his face. At this moment when I noticed it, I was kind of drawn in. This was not right. The engine went into what looked like the remains of a broken down station. There were only a few other engines there all looking sad and afraid. Some even had marks and scars on their faces. The engine pulled up next to what looked like the fat controller, but he was very skinny to the point where he looked like he was going to collapse. His eyes were tired and bloodshot. He looked like he hadn't slept for days. He was a right fucking mess. He just said to the engine, it's time to go. The engine didn't say a word and went down the tracks. It came up to a dark tunnel with the number stickers from some of the engines placed on the side of the tunnel. I saw broken parts scattered around the tracks. The engine said nothing and just went into the tunnel. As he entered, the footage went pitch black for a few minutes. I decided that just in case this was a glitch, to go leave the room and make myself some coffee. But just as I walked out of the room, I heard a voice come from the TV. Please don't leave me alone, Mike. I ran back into the room because that was my name. Please don't leave me. It's scary here. I could hear the engine crying. 
I went up to the screen and all I could hear was the engine just crying. Still being quite skeptical about what was going on, I asked who was there. It just responded with, I don't want to be alone. I felt like I was going mad. Then suddenly before I could ask another question, another voice appeared saying, Fist. Mike. Wanna see something cool? Suddenly, the engine began to cry in horror and started to scream in pain. I heard the sound of metal being torn off and the sound of chunks of flesh being torn off something. The worst thing was that it sounded so real. At this point, I turned off the DVD player, ejected the disc, and threw the disc across the living room. You see, I'm not really a big fan of horror movies and at the time I just saw it as some type of horror bootleg. And I wasn't good with horror movies so, thinking it was a cheap bootleg, I just put the disc back in the case and just went to bed. But that night, I had trouble sleeping. Not just because I had nightmares of Thomas, I decided I just had trouble sleeping for some reason. So I decided that in the middle of the night to just to help my nerves, I decided to get some water from downstairs. But before I could go back upstairs to my bed, I heard a voice from the living room. I'm still here Mike. You missed my awesome trick. I went into the living room and the TV was on. It was an image of what looked like the start of the tunnel from the DVD. I went up to the TV to turn it off, but it wouldn't. Please stay Mike. I want to show you something. I froze in fear. Suddenly, as I tried to turn off the TV, I heard the sound of an engine coming down the track start playing. The engine noises got louder and louder. I could hear the sound of a loud psycho laugh get louder as well. As everything got louder, and everything started to speed up, Thomas's whistle could be heard in the background as well along with the laugh. I tried to turn off the DVD player and I tried to turn off the TV but, everything would just stay turned on. The more I tried, the more it would get louder. At this point I was starting to panic and soon I saw the figure of what looked like an engine speeding towards me, like a bullet, toward the screen. The laugh was now a pure psycho scream you could hear pounding in the room. And then in a panic as the figure started to become more clear, I just pulled out the DVD player from the wall outlet causing the screen to go completely black. It all just went dark. For the rest of the night, I didn't bother sleeping. The DVD was just too much for me. I just got out my laptop and watched comedy shows on YouTube instead. The next morning I went to work as usual. I took the DVD and threw it in the trash. Tony asked why I wasn't going to give the DVD to my nephew. But I just said I'll get him something better. But it wasn't over yet. During my break, I decided to check my emails when I noticed a new email saying, check your photos. We had fun last night. As I checked the photos on my iPhone, I was in shock at what I saw. The photos were taken of me in my house watching the DVD there were photos of me watching Thomas the Tank Engine in my house. Like something was watching me the whole time. There were over 50 photos of me watching the DVD. But then there was the last one. It was of a train track. There were about 10 more photos of the train track until I got up to the last one, which was the most shocking. Standing there was Thomas the blue tank engine. But this time, he was covered in blood. His whistle was broken, but the worst thing was that he was wearing the face of the engine from the DVD Thomas was wearing his face. Thomas's body was covered with the number stickers of the engines he had killed. And in the photo, there was text at the bottom of the screen that said, My life is theirs, 